want to welcome you guys on tonight. I want to invite you guys and join. Just lifting up the name of Jesus. We're just so excited to see your smiling faces. And we're about to just enjoy Jesus. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? All right, let's go.
Oh, come on, somebody. Y'all can do better than that. Let's give God some praise. Hey, listen, I am so glad to see all of you here today. My name is Pastor Rock, and I am the senior pastor of Expansion Church, and this is my beautiful wife. She's beautiful, ain't she, y'all? Hey, y'all. Come on, somebody. And together we get to lead a, did I, did I tell them what your name was? Her name is beautiful. That's her name. My name's Shaterika, y'all. How y'all doing? <laughs> Together, y'all, we get the opportunity to lead not just a church, but a movement. Yeah. We believe that God is wanting to do some amazing things in and through the city of Fort Pierce. Right. And we believe it all is going to start right here. Come on, somebody. Right. Right. And listen, on this grand opening night, we would not want to do this with anybody else but you because y'all are some good-looking people even with the mask on. Matter of fact, look at your neighbor and tell them you look good in that mask. Come on, somebody. And speaking of masks, while we want everybody to enjoy yourself and engage in worship and have a great time, we would just ask for the safety of yourself and others that you keep your mask on at all times. Yeah. One of the things that we've had to do is we really had to define uh, what our goal was tonight as a team and and for us our goal is we're going to let you in on what our what our goal is what we've talked about as a team our goal as a team is for you to leave here feeling like you're a part of this family yeah. right now i'm not saying get rid of your family okay because that would be a little weird okay don't get rid of your family this is about addition not subtraction That's come on right. somebody right. we want you to feel like you're now a part of an, your, your family is even bigger than it already was yeah know what you might have come in here with. I know 2020 was kind of chaotic and much of a disaster for some of us. Whatever you came in here with, I want you to lay it all down, come as on. the song says. I want you to engage in worship. Whatever you come in with, it might have been a burden. You might come in discouraged. I want you to raise your hands up, lift it up high, come and on, engage in worship tonight. Yeah, absolutely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pray uh, for our service, and then we'll continue worshiping the Lord. Sounds good? Yeah. Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity we have on grand opening night yeah. to come together and to praise your name. Jesus, this is all about you, always has been and always will be. And so, Lord, we pray that you would have your way in this room. And, God, we ask that, uh, God, you would just do a work in our hearts tonight. We ask that you would touch us, that you would help to change some things on the inside that don't quite look like you. Do what only you can do in our lives, Jesus. It's in your name we pray. And everybody said Amen. Amen. Let's continue worshiping. Are you guys ready to call on the name of Jesus? Come on, put your hands together.
name of Jesus. Every tongue must confess at the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow at the name of Jesus. We are here, God. We are here, God. you right now to begin to call on the name of Jesus. God, we are healed. Hallelujah, Jesus. We are set free.
Thank you, Jesus. We know we can count on you, Jesus. Jesus. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Jesus. There's a table you In the presence of my enemies Cause your body, your blood to share for me This is how I fight my battle There's a table you prepare for me In the presence There's a passage of, of scripture that I wanted to read to you. And it simply says this. It's Galatians chapter 6 verse 9. It says, so let's not get tired of doing what is good. At just the right time, we will reap a harvest of blessing if we don't give up. I had a conversation with a person connected to our church the other day. and Her story is that She's got two kids. She's a single mom. And about two years ago, 
one of her nephews mother is struggling with alcoholism she has four kids total and this woman agreed to take on this woman's four kids so now here she is as a single mom trying to raise six kids on her own and she's telling me when we're talking she said it just feels like all the weight is on me it feels like I'm surrounded I feel like there's pressure coming in from all sides and I can't help but think that there's somebody sitting in here today that feels the same way she feels you feel like when you look at your situation everything just seems to be crashing in around you it seems like nothing seems to go the way you expect for it to go God told me to tell you something tonight this song says this is how I fight my battles God told me to tell you tonight that the battle that you've been fighting you've been trying to fight it on your feet and that battle needs to be won on your knees because it's on your knees where you see clearly it's on your knees where God speaks to you it's on your knees where you get direction where you get wisdom where you get discernment it's on your knees where Jehovah Jireh the provider shows up and does what only he can do in your life and so I want about three or four people that are co-sign with me and say hey I'm gonna stop trying to fight my battles I'm gonna give it to you God because I know God you can do far better with my issues than I ever could we're gonna go back into this song and I want you to make this a bold declaration a bold declaration of who God is in your life let's go
This is how I fight my battles. My hands are lifted, Jesus. This is how. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you that even when we feel surrounded and feel like everything's coming crashing down, we thank you for the truth of the fact that we're really surrounded by you. Surround us, Jesus. It's the presence of your angels that we feel. We thank you, God, that, that without you, there's nothing we can do. We know that, God, we are nothing without you. And so, God, on this evening, we say thank you, God. Thank you, God, that you love us so much. That you send your son, Jesus, to die on a cross for each and every one of us in the mighty and matchless name of Jesus Christ we all pray and everybody said amen amen you may be seated in the house of the Lord we have some announcements check this out hey family welcome home expansion church my name is Tori and my name's Tierra and we have the privilege of serving here at expansion church if you're new here we'd like to extend a special welcome home we want you to know that it's not a coincidence that you're here today rather we believe that God brought you here on purpose for a great purpose that he wants to fulfill in your life know this the best is yet to come in your life absolutely listen it's our heart to help you get connected here all you need to do is fill out a connection card that was handed to you when you walked into the doors of this auditorium Drive Drop it in the offering basket as we pass it here in a few moments, or you can simply take it out to our next steps area directly following service, and someone from our team will reach out to you this week to get you plugged in to everything God is doing in and around Expansion Church. Couple of announcements. We've got some really exciting things coming up that we have to share with them, Tia. We got to. <laughs> Expansion Culture is the best way for you to get started here at Expansion Church. We'll be offering our first in-person but socially distanced hey. class right here at St. Peter's Lutheran starting February 3rd, 2021 from 7 to 8.15 p.m. And our Expansion Kids team, they'll be offering child care for the little ones that's 0 to 5th grade so that you can focus on all that God has for you. To register today, please head over to our website at expansion.church and click the button that says Let's Connect to sign up for the upcoming class. You won't want to miss it. <laughs> oh, no, that's right. <laughs> Did you know that every weekend during our 5 p.m. service, our Expansion Kids team is full of background check volunteers ready to love on your kids and help them know Jesus in a fun, safe, and clean environment. In fact, our kids are checked in, and right. we wouldn't have it any <laughs> other way. If you want your child to be a part of Expansion Kids now, Next week, stop by the Expansion Kids New Family Registration Area as you leave the auditorium today to sign your kids up for next week's service. Next week, we have a brand new relationship series called A, a Seat, seat at, at the, the table. table. You don't want to miss it. Check out this preview.
her doing it Jeez. big at Expansion Church. Yeah. And in the words of Pastor Rock, come, come on, somebody. somebody. <laughs> this series is everything from marriage, parenting, singleness, friendship, and everything in between. If you want to keep God in the center of your relationship, make sure you join us next week. Bring a friend, co-worker, family member. Meet us there. <laughs> well, that's it for this week's announcements. We're so glad that you decided to join us. We're sending it back over to you, Pastor Rock. Come on, somebody. So I just want to second one thing they said. Next week, you're definitely not going to want to miss our, relation, our relationship series. Notice it's rated R for relationship. All right, we're going to talk about everything from marriage uh, to singleness to parenting uh, to uh, friendships. We're going to talk about everything having to do with relationships. And so this is going to be a four or five week series. You're not going to want to miss this. We're going to continue in our time of worship uh, by bringing our tithes and offering to the Lord. Uh, at Expansion Church, we believe that giving is an act of worship, right? We believe that the, one of the ways we worship a holy God is to be a giver because our God is a giver. There's a passage of scripture uh, found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 6. And it says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows generously will also reap generously. One of the things I'd like to ask you is not to trust us, because we know that this is your first time here for many of you, and you don't know us. But what we do ask you to do is to trust God. To trust that God is potentially wanting to use you to create huge change in this region. And we are a church that's all about creating change. And so we want you to be a part of this. Don't miss this. There are a couple of ways that you can give. Number one, underneath your seat, you will find a card, an envelope. And in that envelope, you can place cash, you can place check in that envelope, or you can put uh, your credit card information right there on that envelope. Another way that you can give is you can text the word give uh, to uh, 833-266-1779. That's a lot of numbers. 833-266-1779. You got that, right? Great. And last way, you can go on our website to expansion.church and you can click the button that says give. Don't miss this. We want you to be a part of giving to everything God is doing in and around this place. Let me pray for our offering. Jesus, we thank you that God, every dime that has come to us came from you. And so God, we return back to you a portion of everything you've given to us. We thank you that you love us the way you love us, God. And we know that this is a small testament uh, to a, a small way of us showing our love back for you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Let's give. One year ago this week, and tonight the nation now nearing that mile. Arizona, they're waiting on new supplies of the vaccine because they don't have enough doses for everyone. Allow me to reintroduce my... Down. I probably wouldn't have got tested if I didn't have any symptoms. For this couple, it's their second trip to the testing site. They say their test today... Because of you, we've come together. This is for George Floyd. It's no late to be at All right, so that video didn't quite work the way it was supposed to work. Sorry about that. Well, some of you, uh, you didn't really care what the video had anyway because it had a tune in the background. And so some of you over here in this section over here, you were actually bobbing your head uh, to that secular music. That was a test. It was a Christian test, and you all over here, you failed. But, but this side over here, you guys were stoic the entire time. Either A, you don't know that song, you've never heard that song before, or B, you were thinking to yourself, why are they playing a secular song in church? You are the real Christians. Give yourselves a round of applause. I'm joking. I'm joking. The real Christians are right here. Hey, guys, I, today we are going to talk all about introductions. Notice the name of today's message is allow me to reintroduce myself. This is all about introductions. Introductions are very important. And some of us love introductions, and some of us hate introductions. Uh, if you are an introvert, you might fall in the category of someone who hates 
introductions. Matter of fact, let me get an idea of who I'm dealing with in this room. If you hate introductions, do me a favor, raise your hand. Two, two people, four people. I can't see behind the lights. I'm pretty sure there are 30 people back there in the back with their hands raised. If you love introductions, do me a favor, raise your hands. You, and there's my extrovert right there. Yeah, some of us, some people, I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an extrovert and I love introductions, but I recognize that it's not for everybody. But it is important that we understand introductions, and the reason why is because we serve a God of introductions. Our God will reintroduce himself to you over and over and over again, and it doesn't matter how long it takes to get a hold of you. He will continue to chase you down. Come on, somebody. That's good news. Our God is a God who cares far more about your next step than he cares about your misstep. Our God is a God who loves you unconditionally. Our God is a God who knows one of the scriptures we're going to read in just a minute. He knows every hair on your head. He knew you before he ever even created the world. Our God is all about making the reintroduction to you. Now, as I say that, you might get excited. Man, it's amazing that we have a God like that. The thing that most of us don't like as much is how and when our God decides to reintroduce himself to us. See, in most cases, our God makes the decision to reintroduce himself when we're in the valley. Oftentimes, we look for God in the, on the mountaintop. And God is like, no, 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 I make my greatest introductions when you're in the valley. Valley is those, those moments in your life that are low moments, where, you, where everything's dark, where you can't see a way out of what it is you're experiencing. In those situations, our God shows up and says, allow me to reintroduce myself. Come on, somebody, that's good news. Folks, as a nation, we are right now in a valley. Matter of fact, the CDC says that uh, by February, 500,000 people would have died because of COVID-19. And we see this little tracker on cable news, and we've seen the numbers go from 50,000 to 100,000 to 200,000. And the numbers just keep going up, and we begin to forget that every single one of those numbers represents a family that is now hurting. I think many of us, when a year changed from 20 to 2020 to 2021, we thought all of this would just end. Almost like COVID-19 has an internal calendar. Oh, 2020 is up. Let me go bye-bye. Nope, it don't work like that, right? Add to that the fact that our country continues to deal with racial tension. Keyword continues to. In fact, I had a conversation with a gentleman the other day. He was 70 years old, and he says, man, I just wish that we could go back to when I was younger, when we didn't have all these racial problems as a country. And I thought to myself, I don't know what history book he's been reading or where it is he grew up. But this is something that a problem that has existed in our country from the very beginning. And a problem that continues to exist. The valley. Then why not add to that political drama? We have both Republicans and Democrats that I believe their primary goal is to show us that we cannot put our trust and confidence in them and that's why we need Jesus. I think so many of us, we've been looking to D.C. And God is like, stop looking to D.C., start looking at me. 
Come on, somebody. And so as a nation, we're in the valley. And when people look around, many people are like, God, where are you? Do you not see what's happening here? Do you not notice the problems that have existed in our nation? Do you not see what's happening? And God, all along, is like, I'm right here. I haven't gone anywhere. In fact, in Deuteronomy chapter 31, verse 6, God says, he will never leave you nor forsake you. Our God has not gone anywhere. So you might be asking yourself, then what's happening then? I'm glad you asked. What's happening is we're in the valley. But here's the great news. Our God makes his greatest introductions to humanity when in the valley. Come on, think about it. The civil rights movement of the 1960s led by the church happened in the valley. When Jesus was born in Bethlehem, it was during a Jewish valley. They were under Roman oppression. When Moses rescued the Israelites from bondage, it was during a valley. If you're in bondage, you're in a valley. I'm just saying. Women in this country fought for equal rights while in a valley. Our God oftentimes makes the greatest introductions when we're in the valley. But we don't like the valley because the valley doesn't feel good. But God says it's necessary because I'm ready to show up and reintroduce myself. Come on, somebody. It's an opportunity. It's not to be despised. Some of us, we are great at searching for God in the daylight. When everything's going great, we got eyes wide open, and we're like, oh, God, I see you moving over there. Oh, 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 you put extra money in my paycheck. Oh, God, I see you. But the second things get dark, we have a tendency to close our eyes. But here's the problem. When you close your eyes, you can't see God move. I would argue that your eyes need to be open the widest when it's the darkest. When you can't see your way, that's when you need to be saying, God, I'm looking to see you move. I know you're doing something. I don't know what it is, but I know you're wanting to do something in my life. Help me to get, give me the eyes to see you do what only you can do. Our eyes need to be open the widest when it's the darkest. I'd love for you to open your Bibles with me. We're going to take a look at a story uh, from a gentleman by the name of Saul. And I think it's really going to help give us a lot of perspective. Now, if you are old school and you've got a physical Bible, pull it out. If you are new school and you've got it on your phone, turn it on. Come on, somebody. Go ahead and turn your Bible on. Turn it to... Uh, Acts chapter 9, verse 1. Acts chapter 9, verse 1. Now, I'm going to set this up in this scripture. We're going to see a gentleman by the name of Saul of Tarsus. He would eventually go on to be called Paul. So when I talk, we're going to use those two names interchangeably. Just know that we're talking about the same person. Saul would go on to write two-thirds of the New Testament. Prior to Saul's conversion to Christianity, he hated Christians. He did everything he could to persecute Christians. He participated in Christian stonings. He participated in arrest and actually executed arrest of Christians. And then he had a reintroduction. Let's take a look at this. Romans chapter 9, verse 1. It says, meanwhile, Saul was uttering threats with every breath and was eager to kill the Lord's followers, Christians. So he went to the high priest. He requested letters addressed to the synagogues in Damascus, asking for their cooperation in the arrest of any followers of the way, Christianity, 
he found them. He wanted to bring them, both men and women, back to Jerusalem in chains. As he was approaching Damascus on the mission, a light from heaven suddenly shone down around him. He fell to the ground and he heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Verse number five. Who are you, Lord? Saul asked. Catch this. This was not the first introduction that Saul had with God. The reason we know that is because he... Can you hear me? Okay. The reason we know that is because he called them by name. He called them by name. He must have met them at some point. Catch that? This was not an introduction. This was a reintroduction. Let's keep reading. And the voice replied, I am Jesus, the one you are persecuting. Now get up and go into the city, and you will be told what you must do. The men with Saul stood speechless, for they heard the sound of someone's voice, but saw no one. Saul picked himself up off the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he was blind. Put a bookmark there. But when he opened his eyes, he was blind. So his companions led him by the hand to Damascus. He remained there blind for three days and did not eat or drink. When we look at this scripture, you'll see that it was in the physical darkness of Saul's blindness that God would reintroduce himself to Saul. Here's the thing. When things are the darkest, that's when God shows up. We're so busy looking for God in the daylight, and God is like, look, I'm just as present in the dark as I am in the light. Come on, somebody. Here's one thing that I also want to point out. Saul was a Jew. Saul knew God. But it wasn't until he had a reintroduction that he realized that the God he thought he knew, he didn't know at all. Notice, he thought he was working for God by persecuting Christians. It wasn't until the reintroduction that he's told that he's actually not working for God, he's working against God. I question how many of us live our lives like Paul. We think we know God, but in actuality, we just know of God. There's a big difference between knowing God and knowing of God. Knowing God is having a personal relationship with him, being able to call on him. Knowing of God is just simply hearing what someone else says or going along with the status quo. Everybody else says they're a Christian, thus I guess I'm a Christian. There's some of us in this room, if I had to guess, that you fall in that category. You know of God. Maybe grandma prayed for you as a kid, took you to church. Maybe even you've been baptized before. But if you were truly honest, maybe there's some things that point to you not truly having a relationship with the Father. If that's the case, at the end of this message, we're going to give you the opportunity to be reintroduced to the Father once and for all. We serve a God of introductions. He makes his best introductions to us when in the valley. Now, in order for us to understand introductions, we've got to be able to break down the anatomy of an introduction. Now, if you are in the healthcare world, there's a good chance that you took a class when you were in school called anatomy. And anatomy was all about learning the different parts of the human body and how they're supposed to function so that when you get into the real world, into your job, your career, your profession, when you see a body part not function in the right way, you can point it out. Well, in the same way, I think as believers in Jesus Christ, we need to be able to point out when God is trying to make a reintroduction to us. And so we're going to break down the anatomy of an introduction so that we know what, we see, what we're seeing when we see it. Make sense? All right. Write this down. Point number one. Introductions are often unexpected. Come on, somebody. 
God doesn't tend to do things when or the way we think they should be done. And if you're anything like me, that bothers you. Because you feel like God should do things, if God would just do it the way you want him to do it, then everything would be all right. Anybody like me? Right? Oh, oh no. no. <laughs> Real spiritual. I, I've never thought that. Yeah, no, God never does things the way we think they should be done. Because he can see things we can't see. Come on, somebody. He knows things we don't know. Our God oftentimes does things in ways that we didn't expect him to do them. Take, for instance, the birth of Jesus. When we look at the story of Jesus, we know how the story goes because we have scripture. But if I was a Jew growing up in the first century, when Jesus walked the earth, there was a good chance that I had very little clue how things would go. In fact, I wouldn't have had a clue how things would end up going. For hundreds of years, it had been prophesied that the Messiah, the Son of God, would show up and that he would show up at an unexpected time. Jesus shows up, and they're expecting someone to ride in on a horse. Strong, mighty, with a sword, valiant. In steps Jesus on a donkey. I'm just saying that was a little bit unexpected, right? They're expecting him to be strong. And he says... When someone hits, the, your, hits you on the cheek, turn the other cheek and let them hit that one too. What? Completely unexpected. Jesus says if someone steals your shirt, give them your coat too. Completely different from what they were expecting. In fact, many Jews were expecting Jesus to come and rescue them from Roman oppression. Jesus comes in and deals very little with their oppressors. In fact, he does more pushback on the Pharisees, the religious folk. Which tells me that Jesus isn't about religion at all. Jesus is all about a relationship. Religion and relationship are two completely different things. Some of us are focused on religion, and Jesus is like, I don't care about religious practices, religious rites, tradition. I care about you having a relationship with me. So Jesus steps in and it's completely unexpected. But here's the thing. Jesus wasn't what they expected, but he was exactly what they needed. How many of you know we don't get what we expect, but we always get exactly what it is we need. That's good news, somebody. That's good news. The, th the, second, the second thing about introductions, introductions are often unmistakable. They're unmistakable. You know it was God. That thing that happened in your life, you can't attribute it to anybody or anything else. Because when you look at it, it doesn't make much sense. That car accident that you got in, it doesn't, that you had, it doesn't make sense that you walked away unharmed. That financial situation that you got into, everybody else ended up in bankruptcy when they went through the same thing. And you walked out unharmed. It was unmistakably God moving in your life. When God moves, it's unmistakable. I know a gentleman in Palm Beach by the name of Jeff, and Jeff was uh, not a believer at all when this story took place. Jeff was one day on his way to work, and
The moment he walks into the emergency room, he collapses. The nurses and the doctors grab him. They take him back to the, into, a, into a room. They begin to, to hook him up to all his vital signs, and they notice that his heart has stopped. So they begin performing CPR on Jeff. Ten minutes go by. They decide, let's call down a cardiologist. They page a car cardiologist. Cardiologist comes down and begins also working on Jeff. Forty minutes go by. At minute number 40, the cardiologist says, everybody stop. Everybody stop. We're done here. Everybody walks out of the room except for the nurse and the cardiologist. The nurse begins to prepare Jeff's body for the morgue as the cardiologist begins to write his time of death in his chart. As he's writing the time of death in the chart, he hears a voice. The voice tells him, go and try one more time. He ignores the voice. The voice is the Holy Spirit, but he ignores it because oftentimes many of us ignore the Holy Spirit when the Holy Spirit comes and talks to us. He puts the chart in the cubby hole, walks down the hallway. As he's walking down the hallway, he hears the voice again. Go back and try one more time. Oh, I guess I will. He turns around and walks back to the room. He gets back in the room and he tells the nurse to step aside. She asks him, what are you doing? This is crazy. He's done. He says, I just need to try one more time. He places his hand on Jeff's chest. He prays one simple prayer. God, if it's your will that this man would live, I pray that you bring him back to life right now in the name of Jesus. He begins to do CPR on Jeff, and immediately Jeff's vital signs begin to come back. Within a matter of a week, Jeff makes a full recovery. The cardiologist making rounds at the hospital goes to visit Jeff and tells Jeff everything that happened. It was on that day that Jeff gave his heart to Jesus. He surrendered his life to Jesus because he knew it was unmistakably God. When you add it up, it doesn't make sense. It defied all the medical textbooks. He was dead for 45 minutes. It was unmistakably God. Now, when you listen to that, you might say, well, that is an extreme case. Maybe so. But you have situations in your life where you can point to and say, that was unmistakably God. I'm not that good. There was no way I could have gotten that job. I'm not even qualified for that job, and I got that job. I wasn't qualified for that loan, and I got that loan. I don't know how. It doesn't make sense. You might call it luck. It ain't luck. Come on, somebody. It's in the valley that God oftentimes makes an unmistakable introduction. Lastly, the introduction is oftentimes unavoidable. It's unavoidable. You know this saying. Finish it for me. You can run, but you can't hide. You can run from God, but you can't hide. Because he will continue to chase you down. It doesn't matter how many times you turn your back on him. He will continue to chase you down. He is relentless. Oh, he doesn't stop. I think about my own story. As a kid, I, I didn't grow up in the church. My mom would take us to church every now and then, but I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't call us church goers. So when I hit high school... I kind of began to despise the church. Then I hit college, and now me despising the church turns into me becoming an atheist. Here I am, I'm a biology major, and I have all these science professors telling me, oh, well, there's no such thing as a God, and, and I can prove it to you. Now, they never proved it, but that's what they would say. And so I can remember one day being in my dormitory, and I'm crying. I am bawling. I don't know what I was crying about, but I was crying about something. Come on, somebody. It's okay for men to cry. 
right? The men are listening to me. The men are listening. I, would, I ain't never cried before. I was crying. Don't remember what I was crying about. But I remember while I was crying, hearing a voice that said, you should pray. And I said to myself, why would I do that? I'm not going to sit here and talk to myself. That's crazy. So there's this battle happening on the inside of me. You should pray. No, you shouldn't. You should pray. No, you shouldn't. I wish that my story was that I prayed for the first time that day. But that's not my story. I didn't pray that day. But when I look back on my life, I believe that that was a reintroduction that God was trying to make to me. It was because of that event that set this cascade of events happening, rolling in my life that caused me to six months later surrender my heart to the Lord. I had run from him for a very long time. And I got to a place where the only acceptable thing to do was to surrender. I'm here to talk to somebody today who you've been running for a long time. In fact, you've been running for so long that you're exhausted. I want to tell you today that there's a much easier route the route I took, I stopped running, and I surrendered. And at the end of the night, I want to give you the opportunity to surrender as well. So what does this all mean? Why is the introduction important? The reason why the introduction is important is because after an introduction with God, Things will never be the same. The Bible says that old things are gone, new things have come. Let's go back to Acts chapter 9. Let's go back to Acts chapter 9, and we're going to skip down to verse number 18. Acts chapter 9, verse 18, and it says this. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes, and he re uh, and re and regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Now remember, Saul was blind. Now he can see again. Verse 19, afterward he ate some food and regained his strength. Saul stayed with the believers in Damascus for a few days. And immediately he began preaching about Jesus in the synagogues, saying he is indeed the Son of God. Remind you, this is the same man who was stoning Christians. The same man who was arresting Christians. In fact, was on his way to arrest more Christians when he had an introduction. This man has now made a complete 180 degree turn. And that's what happens when, we make an, when God makes an introduction. Everything has to change. Come on, somebody. Nothing in Saul's life would ever be the same again after his introduction to Jesus on the road to Damascus. The Bible says that what used to hold you back can't hold you back no more. True introduction to Jesus is everything. So let's tie this into what we're doing tonight. You guys are sitting at our grand opening. And we believe that God is wanting to make a reintroduction to Fort Pierce to St. Lucie County, and we believe that God is wanting to do it through us at Expansion Church. We believe that our God is saying that things in this city, that this city has been counted out. Let's just be real. This city has been counted out for far too long. In fact, I've had conversations with people about launching a church in Fort Pierce and one of the questions or one of the statements that they often say is, well, why Fort Pierce? Isn't that just a truck stop? This city has been counted out for far too long, and we believe that God is saying, allow me to reintroduce myself. We believe that God is saying, 
This city has struggled with high poverty and high incarceration rates for far too long. Allow me to reintroduce myself. We believe that God is saying that so many folks have been hopeless in this city for far too long, but I am the God of hope. Allow me to reintroduce myself. We believe that our God is saying that marriages, schools, families have been broken for far too long. Allow me to reintroduce myself. This for us is not about church. This is not about church. This is about helping people to come into relationship with a God that loves them. With a God that has a plan and a purpose for their life. When you walked in here, you might have seen a, our mission statement on a sign. And the mission statement is simple. It says this, we exist to point a broken world to a loving God. We're pointers. Don't look here. Look here. You look here. You're going to fall short every time. Don't look here. Look here. We point. We help people make a reintroduction. That's what we do as a church. We believe that God is wanting to reintroduce himself to every person that lives in St. Lucie County. And we won't stop until that happens. Amen? We will always be a church focused on Jesus. Focused on loving those that are around us. We will always be a church focused on making our city the best city in America to live. Come on, somebody. Somebody might hear that and say, well, not this place. In Jesus' name, yes, it will be. And we're going to make sure of it. Come on, somebody. We will always be a church that's all about facilitating reintroductions to Christ. You know, in that, in that song, the reason why we played that song in the beginning, and some people are like, oh, they're going to hell. Sorry. The reason why we played that song, it's written by Jay-Z, and after he says, allow me to reintroduce myself, he says, my name is Hope. Almost a play on Jehovah. But he's the fake Jehovah. I know the real Jehovah. The real Jehovah wants to make change in this place. The real Jehovah is wanting to show up and do things that we've never seen done before. The real Jehovah is wanting to empower people and equip people. The real Jehovah changes lives. And so going back to something I said earlier this evening, I think the most important reintroduction that could ever be made today are for those of you who don't know Jesus. And when I say know Jesus, once again, I'm not talking about knowing of Jesus. I'm talking about having a relationship with him. If you do not have a relationship with him, I want to give you the opportunity to do just that today. And so with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, I want to give you the opportunity to make that decision once and for all. There are two groups that I want to speak, speak to. The first group, you used to have a relationship with God. You used to walk with him daily. And at some point, you walked away. Maybe something happened in your life. Maybe, maybe you lost a loved one and you got mad at God because of it. I want you to know that today, God wants you to come back home. The second group of people, if you were truly honest, You've never really had a real relationship with Jesus. Because of that, you tried to fill this gaping hole in your heart and you've tried everything. Relationships. 
status, success, money, you name it, you tried it, and nothing has been able to fill the hole. The reason why it can't fill the hole is because it's a God-sized hole in your heart designed to be filled by God and God alone. And today, I want to give you the opportunity to fill that hole once and for all. So if you fall in one of those two categories, with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, I want to give you the opportunity to surrender your heart to the Lord. But I'm going to ask you to raise your hand on the count of three so that I can know who it is we're praying for today. And so if you fall in either one of those two boats, I'm going to count to three and I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Raise your hands high. Raise your hands high. I see you in the back back there. Thank you. Raise your hands high. Awesome. Go ahead and put them down. We're going to pray this prayer. All of us are going to pray it. But if this is your prayer today, I want you to pray it a little bit louder than everybody else. Here we go. Repeat after me. Dear Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Make me a new person from the inside out. I believe that you died on the cross to save me of my sins. And it's because of that sacrifice that I will follow you for the rest of my days. It's in your holy name we pray. And everybody said, amen. Hey, let's give a huge round of applause to everybody that prayed that prayer. Today, as I said in my message, old things are gone. New things have come. Next week, I want to see you back. We're going to be here next week and every week after that. Same times, 5 p.m., 7 p.m. Listen, family, I am so grateful that you, oh, somebody's holding up a card, something I forgot in the back back there. If you prayed that prayer, we want you to fill out a redemption card. It's found beneath your seat. We want to know about that prayer. Lastly, if you did not fill out a Connect card and you want to get connected with our church, we want to get connected with you. Fill out the Connect card and you can hand it to anybody that has on a lanyard as you're walking out. Last thing, we want to see you back next week. All about relationships. We love you. We're going to be praying for you. Go be with God. Take care.